Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In this video, I will answer that question, which is how does Agent Builder respect SharePoint permissions? And just to be sure, when I say Agent Builder, it is the absolute no code agent that we can build in Microsoft 365 Copilot. And I get asked these set of questions again and again. The most common one being is, hey Daniel, if I have an agent which is using SharePoint as the knowledge in the backend, does giving access to the agent affect the SharePoint permissions? It's a very legitimate question. So I'm gonna answer that one plus four other scenarios. So whether you are a SharePoint admin or a power user or even manager, director and above, this is the video that you wanna watch. But first, here's my intro video. So let me set the scene first. What I have over here is a standalone SharePoint site. And in your case, you might have a site automatically generated by Teams or Microsoft Planner. That will also work. Second thing is the permissions. Like who are all the members? Um, on the top right, when I click over here, you see that it's myself as the owner and I have three other members. Keep in mind who those members are, all right? That's one over here. Uh, and then the site itself, like what kind of content it is. Uh, if I scroll down over here, keep in mind, I actually have some documents, all right? So that way I have some content over here. Now on the flip side, I have a fifth member and that member is not in this group over here for now, all right? That member name is Elijah. That is going to be our test user. And if I just switch over here, you see on the bottom left, that is Elijah. I've signed in as this user and this user has access to all of it, all right? You can also go and see and create their own agents. This is the scene. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and create the agents and start testing those five scenarios I talked about. So to create the agent, I have signed in as myself and I'm coming over here to create an agent. Um, it comes in this side, I'll go straight to the configure. Uh, this agent, I will call that as my, as my holiday sales agent for the description side i'll go ahead and add this agent that provides information about all the holiday sales available in the sharepoint site for the instructions i'll go and put this this agent will provide information about all the holiday sales to the end user in a friendly and polite tone provide links and cite text or comments when applicable all right i'm just going to keep it very simple the important thing is the knowledge i'm going to come over here get, grab that sharepoint site link come back to this tab and just paste it Moment I do that, it gives me my site, I'll just select it and voila, that becomes my knowledge. So everything looks good over here. I'm gonna go and click on create. It says it is creating my agent. Once it is done, we'll go ahead and test the agent just to make sure all the knowledge is coming through. This is good. So for now, I'll just go and click on go to agent. It takes me directly into my agent, so I'm no longer in the de design side. Uh, and over here, I'm gonna go and ask this question. I'm gonna say, what are the latest features available for the Microsoft Power Platform services? I'll go and hit enter. Keep in mind, I already have a knowledge in my SharePoint side, which had to do with license documents, the PDF file. Uh, so I'm hoping that it will go ahead and pull this information in. And it actually does, but we will verify, all right? So when I come over here, uh, there you go. It actually has the reference to this license guide PDF file. I can always go and hover on it. And it says that this is where the information is coming from. I also have a bunch of other slide decks that I use. So if I go and hover on this, it shows me where the information is coming from. Bottom line is our knowledge is coming from the SharePoint site, which means the agent is working. So let me go back in again to this agent. I'll come over here, I'll hover on it. We're going back into the studio side. Um, and then what I'm gonna do next is just grab the link and share it with our test user. Cause that's our first scenario is that if I just grab the link and share that with the user, does that affect the permissions? So let's go through that first scenario. I'll come over here and click on share. All I'm gonna do is just copy this link. Next, I'm gonna switch over to my test user. Again, the test user is Elijah. Open up another tab, paste it over here, click on enter. And now it is attempting, like it tries to reload, it is attempting. And it actually in any second is gonna give us this message. It says, we couldn't find this app. And this is perfect. This is what we were expecting because all I did was share the link. I didn't do anything else. So this gives some reassurance that just because I shared the link doesn't affect any permissions. So that's the first scenario. Let's take a look at the second one. 
And for that, I'm going to switch back again to myself as the agent maker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Elijah access to just the agent. And here we go. I go to specific users in your organization. I'm going to start typing in Elijah and IntelliSense gives me Elijah Christian. I'll select it. I'll click on save. It is says that it's going ahead and sharing it. So I'll go ahead and copy this. I'll go and click on close. But if I come back to the share, I can confirm that it actually has shared it with Elijah. So I'll go and click on this cancel, switch back again to Elijah's permission. Uh, I'll X out over here. I'll also go and close this tab just to be on the safe side. Come back in, open another tab, paste the link one more time, hit enter. And this time it is going through a pop up window comes up and voila, it is actually saying, hey, this agent is available. So I'm going to go and click on add. Once I do that, it is adding. And once it finishes, I'll be able to also see it on the left side right over here. Voila, this is perfect. I'll also go and pin it. So now we have access to the agent. So remember, all I did was give it access to the agent. So the first thing we're going to do is actually test it with the prompt. And just to have a side by side comparison, I'll put the exact same prompt that we did when I was signed in. So here we go. I'm going to come in on bottom. I'm going to paste the exact same prompt. I'm going to hit enter and it is thinking, but I'm very interested to see what happens. OK, so it says, OK, I'll search for the latest features in there. And this is all that it did. All right. It's coming and giving me a very generic information. But here's an important thing that we want to look at. It says I searched your enterprise resources for any documentations or updated to the latest features, blah, 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 blah. Basically. But there are no internal files found that cover this topic. This is really good information. Why? Because we did not give this user, Elijah, access to the backend SharePoint site. That's one thing. And just to be sure, we can also go back and grab that link and see if Elijah can access it. So I'm going to come back to signing in as me. Uh, I'll come over here. I'll grab that link, go back in as Elijah, open up another tab, paste it in, hit enter. And it gives me this message. You need permission to access this site. So that was the second scenario is that just because I gave access to the agent, it does not affect the SharePoint permissions on the back end. In other words, your agent will always respect your SharePoint permissions. The second scenario is usually the one that I get asked the most. And now you have a clear answer because I just tested it with you. Now let's go to the third one, which is me only giving view level access to Elijah Christian. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over now back to the SharePoint site and I'm going to sign in as me because I have access to the site. Usually what happens is when users come in and they get added through teams or they get added to planner, they get something called as a member level access and you immediately see it over here. Member level means that they can have contribute access. They can add, edit and stuff like that. But what I'm going to do is really make it granular. All I'm giving is view level access and to do that, you got to go in the back end. Why? Because if I click over here and add members and say if I just type in Elijah, right? I'm not adding it. If I just type that in, these are the only two options I see. And that's not what I want to do. So just to make this as a pure test, I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to site permissions. I'm going to go to the advanced permission site. And in the grant permissions here, I will search for Elijah. IntelliSense grabbed it. And in the options piece, all I'm doing is giving this one over here, visitor level access. That is it. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll send an email, click on share and the permissions has been granted. Best way to confirm is let me just go back and grab that URL one more time. Click on the home here. Grabbing this URL selected control C switch back in as Elijah open up another tab. I'll paste it in. And now Elijah has access, but only view level access. That's it. A good way to confirm that is see on the top side over here, on top side over here. If I click on settings, that is it. Like that's all you see. You don't have access to go and do stuff. All right. But the view level, is that enough? Well, let's go test that one. All right. So I'm going to come back in. We're still as Elijah and in the agent piece, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and clear this off. If you're going to start fresh, let me go ahead and grab that exact same prompt that we used before. All right. I'm going to come here. I'm going to paste that exact same prompt. I'm going to go and hit enter. Now things should change a little bit. Why? Because we've got access to this knowledge. So it's coming in over here and it's giving me a whole set of other information. Remember this time it's not telling me that I don't have access. And in fact, you can start to see that I'm seeing over here. See, that is the documentation. Very similar when I was testing it. And if I start scrolling down, it gives me all this information 
from that documentation. So this is proof that now this user is able to pull the information using just the visitor level, just the read level access on the back end. Has access to the agent, has read only access to the SharePoint site. This was the third scenario that we tested. Now let's go and test the fourth scenario, which is now going and removing the access. So what I'm gonna do is leave access to the agent as is, but I'm gonna remove access from the SharePoint site and just to see what happens from that scenario. So for that, I need to sign back in as myself right over here. Coming in, going in now directly to that back end, which is back to that site permissions. Going in again to the advanced permissions. We were in the visitor section, so going in. This Elijah, I'm gonna select it, go on actions, remove users from the group. I select remove. Elijah is removed, so I'll go ahead and X this tab out because I still need to confirm so let me just go ahead and grab that link one more time. All right, getting in, signing in as Daniel. Here is the link to that SharePoint site. So let me just go and grab that link, switch back into Elijah. Um, I already have the link over here. So if I just go and refresh it, let's see what happens. It says you need permissions to access the site, which means you've lost that permissions. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is right over here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab that exact same prompt that we did, all right? What I'm testing over here is that I haven't changed or refreshed the browser, whatever, which means there is some cache already in the browser. Let's see what happens, all right? I'll come in, I'll take that exact, I'll come in, I've copied that. Let's start a new chat though, all right? Just to make sure that we've cleared the previous conversation. I'll paste this question in and I'll hit enter. So let's see what happens, all right? Okay, we saw this before too. Right over here it says, didn't find any internal documentation or updates specifically to cover this topic. This is proof that when I went ahead and deleted access to the SharePoint site, the agent access is still there, but it was not able to go and get the knowledge from that site. So and this is all good things that are happening. Once again, reassurance that your agent does respect the SharePoint permissions on the back end. Now for the last fifth scenario, I'm gonna switch things up again. I'll just make sure that Elijah has access to the SharePoint site, but we will remove the agent level access. And by removing, we'll go back and test to see, hey, did it affect the SharePoint site? So let's go and give Elijah access back to that SharePoint site again. So for that, I got to switch over again to me as Daniel. Let's go back over here on the member level. And in this time, we'll just add Elijah directly over here, all right? Because it doesn't matter what level of access it is. We just want to make sure, did the agent remove him completely? So I guess I'll go and keep that as a member. I'll go and do it as a save. Saving is complete. Grab that URL, switch back to as Elijah, and I'll come in, put the link, hit enter. Elijah has access. So now we can go ahead and test that scenario. It's like I'm gonna switch back in as the agent maker, coming back over here. This is the agent, so let me go into the edit side directly. Go into the share piece, and I'm gonna remove Elijah from here. Remove him, revert back to the only you. I'll go and click on save. All right, sharing is completed. I'll grab this for now because I'm gonna need it and click on close. I am going to first check to see, I removed Elijah. So if I sign in as Elijah and if I just refresh it just to make sure, um, I don't see the site going away. I come away with the members, Elijah is still here. So that's the first confirmation, all right? That removing from agent does not affect the backend SharePoint site. And just for grins and giggles, I open up another tab, put the link to the agent hit enter and let's see what happens. It is showing that Elijah still has access over here. Now just to make sure, did Elijah get removed? Let me just double check, coming back in as myself, uh, I go to share, it's only me. In this case, let me go and update it because two things can happen. I will update it over here and the other thing is it could still be the cache in the browser Elijah has signed in. So what we could do is actually, first of all, just grab that correct URL, go back in as Elijah and I'll go ahead and sign in, and I'll go ahead and close this tab, do this one, hit enter. Let's test that. It is still showing up. So what I'm gonna do next is actually sign out and sign back in. I'm gonna completely sign out right over here. Sign out, and it says, hang on, wait a moment while we're signing you out. All right, let it finish, completely signing it out. I'll also go ahead and close this browser altogether. I'm gonna come back in again into my incognito mode, all right? I'm gonna paste that link one more time,
Signing is completed. I'll go and click on yes. Goes back in directly. All right, we are familiar with these windows over here and any second, eh, it says we couldn't find this app. So yes, there was a little bit of cache situation in the browser or something I just had to sign out and sign big. So even though I removed Elijah's permissions to the agent, he still had temporary access to it. But when we signed out and signed back in, he lost all of this access. So that was the fifth scenario is that removing the access from the agent did not affect the permissions of the SharePoint site in the back end. So hopefully this video has cleared some doubts or questions that you may have had. And most importantly, given you the peace of mind is that yes, you can go ahead and create an agent in agent builder and add SharePoint as the knowledge source, but rest assured, it does not alter those SharePoint permissions in the back end. It will always respect it. SharePoint has full control over its permissions and agent builder can do nothing to that. Hopefully this peace of mind will give you some sleep at night. And as always, keep using Agent Builder. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.